Mm. Hello there, dear. I hope you're doing well this evening. Okay. Welcome to your phrenology exam. Have you had a phrenology uh, exam or assessment done before? The first one, excellent. Well, if you're okay with it, before we get into everything, I'm gonna ask you some quick questions, get a little more info from you, and explain the process, just in case you don't know much about it. Mm -hmm. So, phrenology is uh, a quite an old, but a uh, very disproven form of pseudoscience. Our clinic here only does it as a mix of relaxation, hence why we're doing it in the evening, closer to more people's typical bedtime. Mm -hmm. Some patients come for relaxation. Some people, while knowing it's a pseudoscience, do enjoy the fun of getting this type of exam. And... For some, it's also just a way, kind of like, say, face mapping, in a way, a little bit different, but helping, you know, point you in the right direction in terms of maybe health stuff, personal reflection, things like that. Mm -hmm. Because of a very historically um, unethical and... Uh, risky kind of uh, creation, upbringing, things like that. It is a pseudoscience, so that means it is not actually grounded in any scientific evidence. So again, here uh, we at the clinic are just telling you that this is simply for relaxation, enjoyment, personal reflection, if that may be the case for you. Because of that, Please note that none of this is a reflection on you as a person, your personality, the way you move through the world, okay? Again, this is for fun, relaxation, and because of all the reasons that I mentioned, it is not something that you should take too personally. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so I'd say about 75% of our clientele who come in are doing it for relaxation purposes. And then I'd say the other uh, 25 or so percent of that is coming in for other reasons. Uh, again, related to looking for me a personal exploration. Uh, they're just interested in the world of phrenology itself, even if it is a pseudoscience, things like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, going to be taking some notes uh, about you and your answers to my questions, if that's okay, just on the side of my little clipboard and set up here. All right. Mm -hmm. So you told me that this is your first one. Excellent. Does anyone you know uh, have had a phrenology assessment before? Okay, excellent. What did they think about it? Oh, I see. Hmm. Yes, it is quite fascinating, isn't it? Okay. Uh, and did this person go to our particular clinic, or...? Oh, a different country. I see. Okay. Yeah, we're one of the, the few, for sure, in this area, so... All the business tends to go to us. Okay. Next question. Do you feel comfortable with or have any aversions to uh, for yourself? To me, uh, touching your head, touching it around your face, maybe moving your hair around. No. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. And would you be okay then? I do have some very gentle kind of pointy materials that are going to help me brush your hair out of the way, help me see the parts of your head more easily. If that's okay, I'll for sure. You'll see them in a second, but they're not too bad. All 
are you okay in consenting to if I take some measurements of your head as well before we get into the actual phrenology section? That's all right. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> yes. I find um, patients who are bald or have very short hair are certainly easier to work with in terms of seeing and having more easy access to the parts of their head. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, next question. Uh, how would you like to receive your assessment? Uh, we can send you a physical copy in the mail, which will take a little bit longer, or we can send you a emailed digital and downloadable copy. Mm -hmm, for sure. Yeah. And I believe the front desk uh, got your email and all that info from you already. Good. Okay. Okay, so that is it for my questions. Do you have any questions for me? None of them. Excellent. So finally, I just need your verbal consent here. I'm just going to read it to you now, okay? Uh, do you, uh, your name, authorize to have the phrenology exam and assessment done by said associate? That would be me. I consent to the knowledge that this is a pseudoscience. Therefore, does not have any scientific and factual basis in reflection on you personally, your medical health, uh, your mental health, physical health, etc. And uh, finally, do you consent that you um, agreed to all forms of touch in this assessment as well as receiving your uh, assessment online? Excellent. Okay. Thank you very much. Good. Thank you. So, my dear, we are going to go into the whole explanation here for you. So, because you knew someone who has had this done already, I'm going to just quickly skim over all the info for you. All right? Excellent. So, this here... I'm not sure how well you can see the whole thing. Apologies for the little pen marks there. I accidentally scratched them a little bit. This is our phrenology layout. This is going to be the one we're working with today. There are a lot of different versions and additions based on, you know, the year you're looking at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like different um, modern clinics now as well have different versions. This is kind of... A slightly older version uh, and we have a lot to work with here but today since this is your first session we're only going to be going through certain ones okay you we would be here for a very long time uh, if you were to go through every one so you can always book a second session come back and we can relook over your chart and know which ones we haven't done yet and assess those for you if you'd like Excellent. so basically with how phrenology or a very short form of it, is that the uh, height and depth of these different areas on your head kind of indicate whether you have too much of, just enough, or you're uh, deficient in a particular trait, okay? So, see the big here, one here? We've got cautiousness, all right? So, with cautiousness... You know, being cautious, this whole area I will be patting at, examining. And so if it were to be uh, raised higher than a normal level, or higher than the le different levels on the stem of your skull there, uh, that would mean you're overtly cautious. Maybe a little bit too anxious, a little bit too worried going into new situations, etc. And so it would be the same with all these different ones. Lower means less. Mm -hmm. Pretty flat and standard. I find with a lot of our clients, 
most people are pretty standard in everything and then have a few things that they're over or under uh, in terms of efficiency, deficiency, mm -hmm. things like that, right? So, and then I'll be just taking my notes on here as we go through uh, on the different areas, seeing where you're currently at, all right? Before we get into anything, like I was saying to you, I'm just going to take some quick measurements of your head, if that's okay. Great, thank you. Are you comfortable and ready to begin? Excellent. All I need is the general length, width, height of your head, as well as the circumference. So this will be not but a minute. Okay, Excellent. Now the right side of your head here. Good. You just measure from the base of your neck here as well, that's okay. Hmm. Good. And then the base of your neck on the left side. Excellent. And then the back of your head right on your right side here, or sorry, left side as well, right beside your ear. Hmm. Okay, good. Now, if you could reach down for me a little bit, thank you, at the top of your head here. I'm going to be measuring from the top of your forehead to the back of your head, like kind of like the base of your skull, okay? Just keep leaning forward for me, thank you. Good. Okay. And then I'm just going to be going finally around your head. Good. Okay. Excellent. So you've got a pretty standard head, no issues that I'm seeing there. All right, dear. That is excellent. So I'm going to be moving in to now the official exam, right? So we've got everything here. I think I'm going to start with hope and here. Okay. Good. All right. And like I said, this is the pointer that I have here. It is pointy at the end, but as you can see here, it's not sharp at all. It's just gonna, like I said, help me get your hair and things out of the way. All right. I'm gonna do a couple at the same time as well. So we're gonna do hope. We're also going to do the cautiousness as well that we saw here. And then we're going to do secretness below the cautiousness. Okay? So, hope, cautiousness, secretness. Okay, we'll start with those three. Moving in, I'm just going to brush your hair a little bit. right there. Yeah, you can keep your head down a little bit. Thank you. That's excellent. That's why we also don't want to keep you too long because I don't want you to get a sore head or neck from bending over too much. Okay, so this, if you can feel that there, mm -hmm. that is the hope section on your head. Okay, and I'm just going to reach in. Let me just use these to keep your hair I'm feeling it in your hopes section here very gently. Please let me know if I'm pressing on your head too hard or if I'm poking you by accident. Feel free to let me know mm -hmm. or we can take a break for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, so already the first one we are trying out here. I'm feeling like your hope actually is a little raised in this section. Not too much over the standard, but it seems like you have a little more hope. 
than others. So that's a good thing to hear. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we're going to move on to on the side here, this big, large section here for cautiousness, okay? It's kind of on the side of your head in a place that might be a little more sensitive, so it's going to be a little more. Up. It's a big section to make sure I'm checking out here. So, from what I'm feeling here, my dear, is it's pretty standard, nothing to beyond uh, what most people have. So, I believe you have just the perfect amount of cautiousness. Indicating a healthy cautiousness in terms of, you know, being wary in certain maybe precarious situations. But, you know, also not being so anxious and worried about things that you are missing out on trying new things or not going and doing certain things at certain places because you're scared. Mm -hmm. That's good to hear. Now, moving on to the last of these three we're looking at right now. Is there's a small band just below the large cautiousness section here of secretiveness. Okay. I'm just gonna do a big sweep of all your hair to that one side there. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to apologize, don't worry. Everyone's hair looks a little messy after these sessions. <laughs> Especially the more hair you have. But no judgment here. Okay. Mm. Okay, so again, holding your hair up here. Let me just. No worries here as well with the secretiveness. Feels pretty standard. Not many people seem to have this area be of concern. You know, no, yeah, no, it's not a worry at all. For certain areas like this, it just indicates that, you know, you're human, you have a healthy amount of withholding of personal info, at least with strangers, maybe, things like that. If you were to, you know, be deficient in this area and have an indent, it'd be a bit of a worry and a sign of, you know, you're too uh, loose with your secrets or other secrets, you know, maybe someone asks you to keep a secret for them or not tell someone and you end up going around sharing that info. But too much of that would indicate that you, what's the word, you're untrustworthy almost. You're so secretive to the point that people cannot trust you. You don't let people into your life. Things like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so I'm going to be going through, and this is actually the copy of the chart you'll be getting, but we will keep it on file for you as well. I'm just going to be going through and quickly making my notes in these areas, all right? Feel free to give your head a little bit of a break. Okay, so I'll loop this a little bit. Excess of hair. Okay. Okay, and then. Cautiousness, 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 
consciousness. It's us. Standard. Nothing to be worried. Good. And then we have a secretiveness, secretive, secretiveness. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, as we could see, in summary, your hope was a little higher than uh, the standard is, but your cautiousness and your secretiveness was very standard, nothing to be worried about there. Okay, get back to my copy there for you. Excellent. This is the plain one so that you can uh, see it with all my scribbling notes on it. Um, so let us look at three more here, okay? Mm -hmm. We'll do three more, and then we'll go from there and see if uh, you need a break for the evening. Mm -hmm. So let's go for a fun one. Let's go for tune here. It's more so to do with musical tunes. Can you sing, carry a tune? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see where it becomes a bit of a, a pseudoscience for sure. Uh -huh. I'm actually going to go for language. Again, don't mind the scribble there, but go for language. Right at the kind of front, actually under the eye, okay? So we got tune, language. Let's do actually comparison, how much you compare yourself to others. Kind of ties in with what you think about yourself. Actually, let's do one more. We'll do four of them. And then we'll do... Let's do self-esteem. Can you that one there? Sorry. Self-esteem. Right okay. So self-esteem, tune, language, and comparison. Okay. Well, how about we start with the self-esteem first, uh, right on the back. So if you could pull your head forward as much as possible. Thank you. It's a little bit easier to reach here. So there's less hanging hair in the way. So let me push that over. There we go. This little section here. Okay. Yeah, it's a small, narrow section. But to me, it's feeling pretty standard, which is good. You have you know, the pretty average idea and uh, feeling of worthiness and esteem of yourself. So that is good. There is like a little section, like it's a longer section like this of your head, okay? And kind of this section that's closer to the front of your head is like the slightest, slightest, slightest bit raised than the rest of that section that's over here, okay? And that's something to be worried about. That could just mean that you're in current development of more self-esteem, which is very good. Are you doing anything at the moment to help with your esteem? Okay, yeah. Good for you. Yeah, I feel like joining an activity that, you know, you never thought you could do or that you were worried about your capability of, but then you prove that to yourself that, you know, you're improving, you can do it, makes a big difference, huh? Mm-hmm. Excellent, 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 excellent. But otherwise, pretty standard there. If you could put your head up just a little bit again, because we're going to be moving on to... What did we say? Let's move on to comparison, okay? So kind of similar to the self-esteem, often with some of these ones on the map, actually. You can see 
comparisons and where certain areas of the head can reflect upon another. Uh, often there's a lot of tie-ins, so the ones we're looking at right now of the comparison and the self-esteem, you know, if you have low uh, divots in the self-esteem area, then you're probably going to have low areas in the comparison area, mm -hmm. or vice versa. It's a good indication of, you know, in one, like, if in one area you're deficient or standard, etc., then you will probably be very similar in reflection there. If there is a difference, it may show to us that you have conflicting maybe views of self, you have conflicting things where parts of your life you feel very confident in yourself, very content with yourself, you have a good self-esteem. Mm -hmm. So we're we'll moving more to the upper forehead here, okay? I'll be gentle, I'm just gonna move your bangs out of the way. But as I was saying, it's a good indication where, if there is these differences uh, between two similar areas of your head, uh, it indicates that, again, there's some internal struggle occurring. Okay. Good. Can we push this? Good. Excellent. Okay, yeah, as I thought, it's pretty standard. Mm -hmm. It actually seems like it's doing the opposite of what the other area was doing. It seems that like there's tiny little divots starting to form, mm -hmm. which actually is a good reflection that you or comparing yourself less to other people, you're more so just being there for yourself, not worrying what other people think of you. Mm -hmm. Yes, so exactly. So with the phrenology and the different divots, uh, divot does not mean, depending on the area, that being deficient in something is a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so being deficient here in the comparison can be very much a good thing because you're not comparing your life to other people, you're not trying to keep up with what everyone else is doing, mm -hmm, etc. Finally, for our last two sections here, as I can see your neck is getting a little sore, we're going to be dealing with uh, tune and language. So I'm going to do language next. I'm not going to use these guys though because this is right around your eye, okay? And I just don't want to poke or injure you in any this is kind of one of the few areas in the phrenology mapping that is not like right all around the uh, actual skull itself. It's kind of located more down and around the eyes here mm -hmm, for language. So this is one of the ones that's a little mm, interpretive, let's say, or more so than the other at least. Uh, some people interpret it, and some clinics interpret it as, like, if you're multifaceted in multiple languages, um, things like that, but for our clinic here, we kind of go by more so the standard of how proficient you are in speaking and writing, things like that, in your either native language or in a, the languages that you are learning right now, mm -hmm, things like that. Are you learning anything at the moment? Oh, good for you. That's very interesting. Oh, yeah, I'm currently lear learning and relearning French and Spanish, so... Mm -hmm. So, I think I've got, in terms of easiness, I've got much easier languages than the one that you picked. It's good for you. Yeah, am I gentle enough on your eye here? There's not a worry at all here, dear. You're pretty standard. Seems like, you know, you've got a good grasp of your own native language, but you're also working away what you have going on there with your studies. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you just started studying it too. Yeah, that would do it. So the raisedness kind of may begin as you become more proficient in the language you're studying right now. Uh, it may become 
more reflective as you get better at growing in your native language and like the levels at which you speak, things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the two different interpretations of it. Again, with our clinic, it's kind of more I see it as you are strong in your literacy, uh, your speaking, verbal skills, your listening skills, things like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, now moving on to the final, and in my personal opinion, one of the most fun areas of your head to examine. Examine, examine, okay. We have tune here. It's a little bit like up right near um, kind of the base of your eyebrow more so than anything, but a little bit higher, sorry. So like right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not quite near your temple. Okay, if you could just keep your head straight, but turn a little bit that way. Thank you. Yeah, if you want to turn as much as possible. You don't have as much hair here, so just kind of gently, gently, gently move this here for you. So, keeping your head out of the way here. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I hate to break it to you, dear, but I don't know if a, a singing career is cut out for you. <laughs> yeah, there's quite a bit of a divot happening here. But don't worry, that's the same with my own head as well. <laughs> Yeah, most people actually, if I'm being honest, have that divot. It's quite hard to carry a tune and be musically inclined, especially vocally as well, for sure. <laughs> wow, it's all good. I don't think anyone's listening as you're belting out your favorite song at home or in the shower, so it's not to worry. So, my dear. I'm going to do the final note taking on your page here. So just get comfortable, stretch out your neck here. I want to take a minute. So what do we say? So let's do standard here. Finally, tune here. Fortunately, the patient has large
Okay, dear. I think that is everything here. Was there any other areas you wanted to try today, or? You're good, yeah. Yeah, I know. You think it's not gonna bother your neck or your shoulders much, but kind of doing all that weird bending and stretching that your body's not used to can be pretty tiring pretty fast. Mm -hmm. Well, you're free to come back in the future. We can go over a bunch more areas, but until then, thank you so, 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 so much, dear, for coming by for your phrenology exam and assessment, and I hope to see you in the near future. All right, well, you take care now. I hope this was very relaxing for you, and I will talk to you soon. All right, bye now.